The cell phone camera recording of Neda Aga Sultan shooting death in Tehran has become as much an iconic image of protest against repression as the video of the anonymous young man who defied a line of tanks in Beijing's Tiananmen Square 20 years earlier. The protests erupted after a June presidential election gave incumbent Mahmoud Ahmadinejad a wide victory over his opponents, particularly his closest challenger, reformist leader Mir Hussein Mousavi. Reformists claimed vote rigging on the president's behalf and took to the streets in protest. The government responded with a massive crackdown with arrests and trials. The mass protests have faded, but still erupt sporadically. Trita Parsi is head of the National Iranian American Council. He says the reformist smoldering anger and growing grievances could spell trouble in the coming year. Uh, it's a very, very volatile situation on the ground in Iran. And the one problem is, of course, if the opposition starts beginning to talk about this in existential terms for the government, then the government may feel that they have their backs against the wall and they have no other way out. The protests complicated President Obama's plans to reach out to Tehran and Iran's response to those overtures, particularly on the sensitive nuclear issue. Iran continues to insist it has only a peaceful nuclear program. In October, Iran appeared to finally agree in principle to sending nuclear material to a third country for enrichment. But Iranian officials then backed away from the proposed deal. Alex Vatanka, an editor of Jane's Islamic Affairs, says it is not clear if that signaled a split between the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, and President Ahmadinejad, or was a stalling tactic. The question is, was this miscommunication? Was this Ahmadinejad's people getting ahead of themselves in the pursuit of uh, perhaps reaching some sort of dialogue with the West and Khamenei being upset about it and stopping it in Tehran? Or... Is it a deliberate, fully calculated, tactical game that Iran, some have argued for, for a while, plays, which is to play for time? Whatever the reason, the response has heightened a push for new sanctions against Iran at the UN and from the U.S. Congress as well. But analysts say any sanctions should be carefully calibrated against the government of Iran and not the people in general. Trita Parsi says sanctions could backfire against the reformist movement. So what you don't want to do is to put the opposition in a position in which they suddenly now, instead of focusing their energy on challenging Ahmadinejad, have to defend themselves uh, and defend their nationalistic um, cre uh, credentials by coming out and blasting uh, the U.S. sanctions. The opposition is in a tough position enough fighting such a brutal, repressive system. But analysts point out that no significant sanctions will be coming without the backing of Russia and China. Both have so far been reluctant to back such measures. Gary Thomas, VOA News, Washington.